One, two, three, four, ten, ten. Okay, welcome back, welcome back. This is the Deer Man, your host. Okay, so, um, Minjard was just about to- You didn't see any boob there, right? I don't think so. I didn't see any boob. Um, Minjard was just about to do some ass-kissing fucking backward flips, jumping jacks and shit, so let's see this embarrassingness. And I don't even know who she's talking to. Is she talking to, uh, Seneca, her boss? Or is she, or is his name Shiloh or Seneca? I don't remember which one was his first name and which one was his last name. Um, or is she talking to that guy that she was hitting on before that I don't even remember what his fucking name was. Oh, uh, Ethan, no, not Ethan Hawke. That's a fucking actor. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. I, his name was Hawke, though. It was like something Hawke. It was like Sam Hawke or something like that. Um, I don't remember. It better not have been Ethan Hawke. That is an actor, right? That's that guy from Gattaca. That better not be what his name is. That would be so fucking hilarious. I'm not even a fan of that guy. Anyway, um... What was I talking about? Oh, Norman, I think, was his name. Norman Hawk? Is that what it was? I don't know. I'll have to play back another video. Um... Alright. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know why I love this job, Mindred side? It's just knowing that you're helping the world. That maybe because you help, thousands of lives could be saved. I mean, it's people like us who created the medicines. People need to survive, right? What is this, a fucking right-wing talk show host? You know? Ha oh, it is Hawk. Okay. Hawk shrugged. I don't know. <laughs> He's like, I don't give a fuck. I'm just trying to get paid. And like, you know, these, these are the only people that were willing to overlook my felony charge or something. I don't know. I mean, the first year I was here, it was pretty exciting. But now, he shrugged again. Well, it pays the bills. Yeah, just like I said. Um, Tomorrow's the last day, California, Willie s said. California looked up at her. Hey, hey, that's right. How did you know that? How could you know that? You've only been here a little while. I have ears, California. They're going away. She started to laugh, but it turned into a dry cough. We're gonna have such a party in here. Yeah, you're gonna have a big ass party locked in your little ass cages. And yeah, you're you're gonna have like a week's break of being tortured or whatever. But like, you're still gonna be in your little ass cells. And you're not, if these five by five cells and you're not gonna be taken out at all. You, maybe no, I don't even think anyone's gonna come in here and clean up after you. Is anyone even gonna feed you? Is anybody gonna- are they gonna check on you more than once a day? What if you knock over your water bowl like these fucking losers like to do? You can go all day long, like, sitting in your own shit in a 5x5 five five cell. Not even enough room to stretch out, even if you're only 5'5". Five five. Or, yeah. And it, it just sounds like hell. You're not gonna have a fucking party, Willie. God, you're out of your lobotomized mind. Alright, just then a DOA Did they ever, ever fucking explain why they're called DOAs? Okay, I don't remember if this was already in here or not, or if it's coming. But, uh... I, I don't remember it being explained, and I thought it was in, earlier in the story, but it wasn't. So, like, the reason they're called DOAs... Just so stupid and lame, once again, 12-year-old ed edgelord sh bullshit over here. Um, like... It's because the whole idea is that once you get into this place, you're as good as dead. So you're like DOA, right? But they're the ones who work at the place, so they're the ones making you DOA, so they... That's why they're called DOA, basically. I don't know. Whatever. It's stupid. Um, he, uh, blah blah blah. Just then a DOA swung open the door. He was alone, of course, because he has no fucking backup. I'm sure he has no, uh, cattle prods, no, no stun guns, no... Billy clubs, no fucking anything, you know? Uh, I'm sure he doesn't even have, have, it doesn't even have any gloves. I'm sure he doesn't have shit. It took a moment, but California recognized him. He was the boy that Skippy had kissed all the way back in August. She kissed somebody? I don't even remember that. He wasn't such a newbie anymore. Oh, it says new, it, it says newbie instead of newbie. But okay, newbie, newbie, whatever. He leapt over to, he leapt over to Skippy's cage. I guess he was excited 
to, to come over there again. I don't remember her kissing somebody. I, maybe she pulled, I think she pulled him to the bars or something, probably, because that sounds like some stupid shit I would do. And threw the door open. She was asleep. It woke her up. She snapped at him, but she missed, and he grabbed her roughly by the back of the neck, even though humans have no loose skin there, usually. I mean, even if you're fat, you don't, I don't, even if you're fat, which she is not, but, but, like, I don't think you can just grab somebody like a cat, you know? Like, human skin is not loose like that. Even if you're fat, you can't just grab the fat like this. Like, it doesn't work like that. Humans are pretty thick. I mean, not thick, but, like, dense, you know? You can't just grab them like a shirt, you know? Anyways, whatever. Um... Where was I? Uh, blah, 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 blah. I'm just gonna pretend, like, when it says back of the neck, it means, like, the back of their, like, shirt, their little scrubs or pajamas or whatever they're wearing, you know? Um. She snapped at him, but she missed, and he grabbed her roughly by the back of the neck and dragged her out. Get out of here, asshole. It's still morning. Leave her alone. Use your teeth, you wimp bastard. They're saying that's the guy that works there. Like, Use your teeth. Okay. Because they, these are all furries, I guess. On the inside, not on the outside. What do you think you're doing in here? But just like the others, he might as well have been deaf. In only a few seconds, all that was left of them was the swinging of the heavy white door. So he just dragged her right out. Not a word. Interesting. Skippy! Skippy! California screamed after them. When you come back, bring me a bit of his ear, won't you? Who fucking talks like that? She didn't know if Skippy heard her. She didn't, because they were already on the other side of the door and probably halfway down the hall. But it was still fucking funny. Yeah, so fucking funny. She fell back on her water bowl laughing. And they're always spilling their water. They're always spilling their fucking water all over the place. And it's just like, don't you guys value being able to drink? If I was locked in this fucking Guantanamo Bay situation, I wouldn't let a drop of my water spill. I'd be fucking, I'd be treating that shit like fucking diamonds. But, okay. Um, then again, uh, this girl is supposed to be fucking crazy, I guess, some shit. So, fucking, you know, scum drag the society or whatever, so who fucking knows. Uh, so, Minjured asks, are you going home for the holidays? Nah, Hawk answered, my family. He shrugged and stuffed his hands in his pockets. They don't really want me. I'm staying over with a few buddies, though. I don't want to hang out around here while I don't have to, like, well, like your boss. <laughs> Mr. Shiloh? Oh yeah, that was his last name. He saw her face. What's the matter? Nothing, Minjured replies. I just feel a little sorry for him is all. California suddenly realized that as long as she had been there, Butterclip had never been taken out. Ever? Ever? Never to walk around? God, he must be atrophied as fuck. He, he, I'm sure... Once he fucking finally stands, he's just gonna fall right down to the floor. That's tragic right there. That is tragic. Man. She still has the hots for him, man. Um. Maybe the DOAs forgot about him. No. Then they wouldn't have fed him. Uh. It says they, they wouldn't have fed him, but I think it means then they wouldn't have fed him. He was such a shadow. So quiet. Sometimes even California forgot he was there. But oh, was he a mystery? Yeah, so fucking sexy. Of course, she only realized this after they actually did take him. The DOAs came a little while after Skippy. Actually, it was an hour, but who's counting? She was seeing more and more of DOAs this time of year. Maybe, probably, it was because of what Skippy and uh, Willie said about them going away. Butterclip was blind. She expected him to struggle, straggle along with the DOAs, barely keeping his balance. But he was just as graceful as ever. As graceful, standing upright as any woman. Okay. <laughs> Are you trying to say that only women can walk well and men just fucking stumble around like fucking hardcore drunks? Like, okay, whatever. I know what she means, like a stereotypical, like, oh, a graceful swan, you know, whatever. But, okay. And, um, this is after not having been able to get out of that tiny-ass little cell for, like, literally, 5 by 5 is, like, I, pro I probably thought it was more when I was a kid. I probably thought it was more, like, you know, the size of, like, a little bathroom or something. But, like, 
That's more like a bathroom stall, like, I don't know, man. Um, he was beautiful, it says. No change. That's, that's taken straight out of fucking uh, Twilight Zone. Eye of the Beholder, when they take the lady's bandages off and it, he's like, no change. Yeah, that's what, that's what this is. What? I said no change. Yeah, he just fucking said it. He remembers everything from last year, before the experiment. The hypothesis was wrong. Wow, science never ceases to amaze me. <laughs> Seneca said nothing. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, God. California started to think things. Escape things. She remembered the day Livel got out. A day she hadn't even thought of since it happened. She started to get frustrated. She remembered what she said to herself. If he can get out so easily, how easy would it be to get all of us out? It's not fair, she said in her head. This time of year, the DOAs get to leave. This place, so why not us? Why not us? And then suddenly she screamed out, Why not us? Why not us? California, yeah, it's not fair, but what are you gonna do about it? How did fucking Willie even know what she was thinking about? She's like, no, nah, I know, I'm reading a story too. She glared at Willie, the green fire. She remembered the day she came, how lively, how fiery she was. Now she just looked sick. She made Cal California sad and angry at the same time. That night, the door swung open. California leapt up and the block went into its howling. Someone was coming back, but she couldn't tell who it was. Wait, it was a DOA with Butterclip. California's mouth gaped open. She almost didn't recognize him. He wasn't big and he was thin and pale like the rest of them, but she got a feeling from him that he was very strong. Like strong-willed, I guess. Why? Why did he look so different? He had looked them over so many times and all... She had ever seen- oh wait, all she had never- oh wait, she had looked him over so many times, Ugh. and all she had never seen were his eyes, but he looked like a whole new person. That's how it's gonna be after we, um, stop wearing masks in public. It's just gonna be like, what is- what is life, you know? What is human? Um, and then he looked in her direction. His eyes were brilliant. They were yellow-green and very cat-like. When the moonlight hit them a certain way, they glowed. Moonlight is coming in here? I kind of assumed that there was, like, fluorescent lights in there or something like that. Um, his hair, blonde, tipped with black. The, uh, what? Okay. Um, nearly covered one eye, but he shook his head and it fell back. Yeah, I'm glad he's so fucking stylish. This is just anime bullshit. Um, um, well, uh, covered one eye, but he shook it and it fell back. I'm just imagining that to be like in slow motion, like, like all like glamorous and shit. That's fucking funny. This is a weird fever dream, as they say. And then he was in his cage. California wanted so bad to speak to him, to be the first, to be his friend. You know what? He he could have talked this whole time. They covered up his eyes and maybe ears too, I don't know. Oh, maybe that's why, because maybe if his ears were covered, maybe he couldn't hear. That sucks, a whole year of Helen Kellerness in a little ass cell that you never get taken out of. That's fucking bullshit, they had to have taken him out at some point. But like I said, this is not reality. This is a strange world with different, you know, abilities and physics and things. Um, where was I? Because I was about to say, like, they could have been talking to him this whole time. Like, he clearly didn't want to talk to them. But then I'm like, wait, if they covered up his ears, too, I guess maybe he couldn't, couldn't have a conversation like that. I don't know. Uh, blah, blah, blah. California wanted so bad to speak to him, to be the first, to be his friend. But her mouth was dry. Her mind was blank. And then she heard the one thing that it could break the moment. That could break the moment. Willie. That Willie trying to steal her man. Hi, I'm Willie, the green fire. I hate how she fucking says that all the time. That is some Charlie Chan bullshit. Uh, that is just... Ugh, God. Who are you? I'm Butterclip. 
How dare she? How dare she? <laughs> so I like how, even though they're in a fucking torture chamber, she's just like jealous of some bitch is trying to take her man. California spat. She had been here longer than that green-eyed bitch. She cursed her. <laughs> and then she felt ridiculous. All this was too complicated. How could she be jealous? She leapt up against the front of her cage. Hey, Butterclip. He looked at her. Hello, I'm California. That's when everyone else started to introduce themselves. Wow, Butterclip, such a fucking, like, star. Butterclip was actually older than all of them. No wonder he seemed so awkward. <laughs> Is that what it's supposed to when you when you get older, then it fucking teen. Everyone's like sixteen years old or some shit. When you get older than that, you turn awkward. I think it's the other way around, asshole. But okay, he turned around at them. No, it's because he had been away for a while. I remember some of you guys, Digger. What happened to Thiami? Um. <laughs> okay, he didn't know. He saw Digger's. I feel like he still could have picked up on things that were going on. I don't know. Whatever. I don't fucking know what having your eyes and ears covered for a year would do. He saw Digger's face and decided not to ask about her anymore. He's like, okay, I get the point. Val still kicking ass, right? God, she's such fucking one-dimensional. She showed her claws to prove it. Uh, oh yeah, and I'm sure none of them cut their fingernails in here, huh? They, they probably just chew them off, you know, I would. I'm not having these long-ass nails. Besides, even if you try to scratch somebody, your nails just bend back, and they'll suck, you know? They just fucking suck. I cover my boob right here so I can move around a little bit. Um. Uh, everyone's just so cartoonish. I don't recognize the rest of you. He looked at their confused faces. They're gone, aren't they? He sighed. This was more him. So everybody else besides Digger and... So Digger... Val and Butterclip are like the OGs, and everybody else has come within the last year, I guess? That's interesting. That actually kind of makes more sense, I guess. Um, this was more him talking to himself. The block was strangely silent. In a few minutes, everyone was asleep. Everyone's just fucking asleep. They're like, oh yeah, we can finally talk to this guy that's been a fly on the wall like this whole fucking time, but no, it's all just go to sleep. It's all just pass out. California had a strange dream. She and Skippy were running across um she and Skippy were running across the sky right up next to the stars. There were other animals there too, mice and spiders. They just kept on running and laughing as they ran and never got tired. Oh, that's so sweet. When she woke up, Skippy was back in her cage. She giggled. She wanted to tell her about the dream. Skippy, hey Skippy, hey, I had a dream. And Skippy, uh, Skippy's gonna be like the bottomizer or some shit. Oh yes, fucking yeah, last page, bitch. But Skippy wouldn't answer her. She got scared. This wasn't like her. Willie, help me get Skippy. I never knew Willie was such a big character. Uh, Willie pulled at Skippy through the wire until she faced uh, California. She leapt back in terror, her mouth gaping open. Skippy's eyes were unfocused and lifeless. Skippy, Skippy, the DOAs, they killed her. No, Willie called back. She's still breathing. Tears were blinding California's vision. She snapped back in a heartbroken rage. Then it's someone else. Skippy didn't act like that. She doesn't have her own mind. They took it away. She started to sob. How could they? Experiments were one thing, but to take away her first friend, her best friend, it was almost too much for her. <laughs> That's the nature of experiments, baby. The DOAs can break your heart and your mind, but can they break your spirit? It was Butterclip. Butterclip, shut the fuck up with this fucking New Age bullshit. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think they can, man. I mean, everybody's not a fucking, like, yeah, give me all the torture in the world, I don't give a fuck. Uh, I don't know, you know, like, everybody's not up there. I just can't believe she's gone. She sobbed, choking back tears, and the last thing I ever said to her was some stupid joke. Was she a joking person? <laughs> yes. Then I don't think she'll mind, do you? What was your dream about? Oh, of course, this, this man. He's so wholesome. Uh, she told him. Then it's obvious, isn't it? She isn't in her body anymore. She's in your dreams. Oh god, Butterclip. This guy. California suddenly stopped crying. Of course, when he said it, it made so much sense. Butterclip, thank you. 
hey, you're not the only one who's lost a friend, you know? Oh, this is just anime bullshit and fucking soap opera bullshit. She looked at him, eyes bright and shining. Yeah. And on that note, that's the final page. Woohoo! Look at this blank spot right here. Woohoo! Look at all that. Alright, that's Maru. Nothing belongs to me. I've had this notebook for so fucking long. Now it's time for it to go, along with so many other things I've gotten rid of on my quest to minimalism. Alright, man. That was an interesting ride. Well, what can really be said? Oh, 20 minutes? Well, I'm going to put it on for a couple more minutes because I want to discuss this, but not in too much in depth. I mean, really, what can you say, you know? 12 years old. 12 and a half years old, just like fucking Harvey said, you know? Um... I mean, yeah, all I can really say is, like, you know, when you're a kid and you write stories, you don't know all the stuff you're going to know later on. So everything's not going to be accurate, you know? Like, obviously, when you're writing a story as an adult, you got all your all your knowledge to however old you are. You know, put that in your story, and you're going to be like, I think this is how it would happen. I think this is how it would happen. Even if you're writing, like, a fantasy story, those things will, like, influence you and stuff. But it's kind of... All even though it's ridiculous and dumb, and I obviously, like, insult my own work, like, constantly when I'm reading it, it has a cool factor to it, too, because it's obvious, like, it's just detached from everything that I know now, and that's kind of cool in a way, I think, personally, because, like, it gives it a different level of, like, abstraction. It's like, this is something that was written by somebody who doesn't, doesn't have a full grip on the way things work in the world. Even simple things, just not even thinking about things like the cage is too small or where they're gonna go to the bathroom and you know, just like how are people still able to walk after sitting still in one spot all cramped up for too long and you just don't think about things like that or like what, what's the deal with the fucking winter break? It's kind of just like a dream, you know? It's more stream of consciousness. It's the type of things I struggle to do now that gives me writer's block because it's like I'm trying to make everything like solid and good story and like no this I want when other people read this story I want them to be like yeah this makes sense and get into it and not be distracted or laugh at like all the stupid little things but at the same time wanting to do a good solid st realistic story like that well like you know it's just more labor you know but like if you're not even thinking about stuff like that, if you just literally let, just let it flow like a dream. Like, you know how when you're in a dream, you can go, like, from, like, one area to another and just, for no reason, just automatically a weird shit happens. Like, I had this dream that I remember because I wrote it down. I hardly ever write down my dreams because when I wake up, I'm too tired to hold a pen. Like, when I first wake up, and that's when the memory of the dream is strongest, you know? But, like, I don't have, like, the physical strength to, like, hold a pen and write until I wake up a little bit. And when I wake up a little bit, I forget the dream. So, you know, so it's kind of a catch-22, you know? But, um, anyways, I did write down this one dream one time because it was pretty vivid. And all this weird shit happened, you know? It's like, first I was in the subway, then I was with my mom on the street going to the bank suddenly. And then all of a sudden, like, instead of seeing the bank, I was kind of, like, watch Like, my whole vision is, like, I was watching a movie all of a sudden. It was just, like, this lady's like head on like a black background and her she was like had snakes in her hair like Medusa then she took the snakes out and she kind of threw them to the side and then all of a sudden the snake while well, I was back in the bank the snakes kind of just like appeared in the bank and people were like stomping on them and all I could think about was like oh that's really horrible because snakes have vertebrae and backbones and they're like breaking their backs you know and I was like that's just kind of the weird flow of like a story written by a young kid especially like Especially a kid, like, a middle schooler who's, like, trying to get into dark subject matter but doesn't know enough yet to really get into it, but is just kind of, like, first glass try. You know, like, all the random dark thoughts in your head just coming on the page, but, like, in a, in, like, a weird, like, it's like a puzzle that's, like, missing some pieces, you know, and stuff. So you can see the image that's there, but there's, like, big chunks missing, you know? Big chunks of reality that are just not there, you know? And, uh, I kind of like that in a way, you know? I think it has merit. I don't think- I don't like this whole obsession that, you know, us as a people have of, like, 
everything's got to be as real as, as possible. Everything's got to be exactly like real life and how it would really be. And, like, I just feel like people are too... Sometimes people are... They put that at such a high pedestal, you know? And it's just kind of like... Sometimes people forget, like, the the merits of, like, having things that are dreamlike or even just out of ignorance or... or fairy taleness, you know, or just, you know, just leaving out certain parts of the world. I think it's kind of interesting to take away certain parts of reality and see what you're left with, because obviously you can't do that in real life, so you have to do it in art, you know. Anyway, 25 and a half minutes. Alright, well I hope everyone enjoyed seeing my, my back right here, my back and my side. And, um, my fucking foot in the background for all the foot fetishers out there. You know what? I think foot fetish is so weird. I can't believe it's so popular. Like, I did some... I looked up fetishes online a couple times. Not not specific fetishes, but just stuff about fetishes in general. I found it interesting. I mean, I have some of my own, you know, but, like, the ones I have... People don't talk about them. I guess because they're, like, they're not popular enough or whatever, you know? But, like, um... Yeah, the main one, the main all the fucking fetish sites are like, oh yeah, like, half of foot fetishes are like foot fetish, and then the other half is like everything else, you know, and it's just like, why, why feet, why feet, you know what, but the, I, this is what I was gonna say, I can kind of understand why people would find feet to be interesting, because feet are weird, like, feet are just a weird part of the body, the skin on the bottom is different than the skin on the top, they have these weird curves, and the toes are just, like, these weird little, almost like fingers, but it's not. And then, like, just, like, the, I don't know, the shape is weird. It's kind of like an ear, like how an ear is just, like, a weird shape that nothing else is like it. A foot is like that, too, you know? It's just weird. It's just bizarre, and it's just fleshy, and, like, I don't know. So I can understand why people are, like, fascinated by feet. I think feet are weird, too. And they're very, I don't know, they're worth being interested in the same way like one of those weird like deep sea animals. You know like those weird like, like uh, not even like angler, like yeah anglerfish is one of them but that's like a well known one. Like you know all the weird ass shit that lives in the bottom of the ocean. Like feet is kind of like that to me. Like it's like, okay I can see why you might find it interesting because it's weird. And I also respect feet because I like to dance and the, they let you dance and it's kind of cool how like something only like, you know, a small proportion of your body can support your whole weight and the balance and everything. But as far as sexy, as far as it turning you on, as far as libidos and all that is concerned, I'm just like, no. I don't understand that part. I don't understand. And people are like, oh, I... Oh, like, um, but the, the, f the foot part of your brain. Okay, apparently the f there's a foot part of your brain. <laughs> like, okay. Um, they're like, it's near, it's near the sex organ part of your brain. So, turns you on. I'm just like, what? Like, okay, I think arms are sexy. Does that mean that the arm part of my brain is near the sex organ part? Okay, like, what the fuck? I don't know. I don't fucking know. But anyways... Um, yeah, that will be all. I'm happy I finished Nothing Belongs to Me. My first attempt at a fucking novel. And, um, yeah, go down in personal history for me forever and ever and ever. Ah. So, yes. And next time I'm gonna do the speed run. All, a whole bunch of emo shit back to back to back. And then after that, I'm just trying to find this one called Click Movie. That's when I'll actually read, like, in, like, you know, I'll dedicate videos specifically to that one. Because Click Movie was, like, the first, like, comedy that I finished and I was proud of. And it basically paved the way for all the other comedies I wrote after that. Like, it's, like, in script format, it was, like, fan fiction, but mixture of, like, a huge crossover of, like, every character is from a different thing, basically. Like, a Dante's Inferno style, you know, fan fiction. And, like, um, even there, one of the characters was, like, a kid from my school. He was a minor character, so don't worry. Um, but, yeah, it's just kind of, like, anything goes, you know, and, like, I'll read that one separate, but it might be, like, fucking 30 parts because it's pretty long. But, um, anyways. Alright, I'm gonna tune out now. It's 30 minutes now.